Hello everyone and welcome back to part 5 of our Blender tutorial series. So today we're going to texture our floor and see our wall and then we're going to add in a camera and a couple of lights to our scene. So let's start off with texturing. So the wall is actually very simple. Um, in our reference picture it's basically just a gray color. Um, so that's really easy to do with um, our shader. So with the wall selected we're going to add a new one. We're just going to call this wall and what we're going to do is we're going to set the base color to kind of like a nice grayish color, a little bit of a green grayish color, I guess. Um, and since it's a wall, it's not going to be really reflective. So we're just going to bump roughness all the way up to one. So if we go to material view, you can see that's kind of what it's going to look like in the final render. Um, next, we're going to add materials to our flat floor. So this can actually be very easy, so I'm going to enable an add-on that will allow you to quickly add um, uh, photorealistic textures to materials. So um, let's first go up to File, or sorry, Edit, and then go to Preferences. And on the add-on page, if we search um, Node Wrangler, make sure you have this checked. And then what this allows you to do is to quickly add materials to your scene. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new material and call this wood sorry wood floor and with the principled bsdf selected which you can tell because it will have a white outline on it i'm going to press Control shift t and this will open up this special menu so you can see if i go to my materials folder and select the color normal map and reflection and reflect sorry reflective map all by hitting um, shift click um, this will automatically apply this to our material. Um, if you don't know what these normal maps mean, um, I'm not going to be covering them in this video, but just know it'll help make your texture look a lot more realistic. Um, I, th I have a couple of videos that talk about this, but if you want to know more about it, just Google normal maps and or Google normal maps and or realistic 3D materials, and that'll really help you get started. In this case though, with these three selected, I'm going to then click on the principal texture setup and you'll see that'll connect all of our textures up for us. Um, in this case, it looks like it didn't bring in the um, roughness. So I'm gonna do that real quick, or sorry, the reflective map. So I'm going to hit um, Shift A. I'm gonna manually add it in by typing an image texture. I'm gonna hit open and we're gonna bring in that reflective map. So let's drag that up to to uh, roughness and it looks a little too reflective so I think we need to invert it real quick so I'm going I'm going to type invert after hitting shift a and if we click that right there you can see it looks a bit more realistic so you can see our scenes coming together though so we have a nice floor texture we have a wall texture um, I think the floor could look a little bit um, like a little bit scaled up so I'm going to go to the scale um, over here, and this will basically scale all of our textures. Um, this was again set up automatically, so don't worry about it. But we're going to set the scale to, let's try three on the X, Y, and Z. Um, that's a little too much, so let's try 1.5 maybe. I think that gives a little bit better of a look. So yeah, so if we go into rendered view, you can see our scene starting to take shape, but it's a little bit too dark. Um, so let's add in a camera and some lights. So let's go back to the layout tab and we can go back to solid view up here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit shift A and add in a camera object. So here's our camera right here. Um, it can be a bit weird to move the camera around and rotate it. So one thing that I like to do is press zero on the numpad and it'll lock us to the camera view. Now if you notice if you drag around it'll snap you out of it but you can actually lock it to the 3D viewport um, controls. So I'm going to press 0 on the numpad, then press N to open up the side panel over here. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the View tab, and then I'm going, I'm going to check the Lock Camera to View box. So with that checked, you can see I can move the camera around, and it'll actually go with the um, camera. So that's very cool. So I'm going to zoom in a bit on the um, candles, get them nice and centered, uh, making sure that none of our... Um, background or making sure our background is 100% um, visible it isn't cut off anywhere and then I'm going to uncheck the lock camera to viewport so you can see our camera is nice and centered over there um, so now we need to add some lights to our scene now 
There's a couple lights you can add. Um, in this case, I personally like the square lights. They kind of look like studio lights. So in this case, I'm going to hit Shift A and we're going to add in lights, area light. And basically, we're just gonna kind of roughly drag this. So I'm gonna just hit G, drag it over here. We're gonna press R and then uh, Y to rotate it on the Y axis, then R and then Z and rotate it on the Z. And let's just kind of drag this back a bit. And basically that will project a rectangular light in the direction of that arrow. So you can see here, if I go into rendered view, um, I'm gonna hide this side panel with N. You can't see anything cause it's too dark. So I'm gonna set the power up to a really high value, like 500 maybe. And you can see it's projecting that light off. Um, we're gonna increase the size a bit. So it has a bit softer shadows. Um, but yeah, that's looking pretty good, but it, I don't like how dark those shadow, shadows are. So we're gonna add in a kind of like supporting light. So I'm going to go back to solid view and I'm going to hit shift D and then we're gonna drag it along the Y axis. Then we're gonna hit, oh, sorry, my screen, my uh, screencast is off again. Then we're going to hit R and then Z, rotate it on the Z axis. So they're kind of pointing at two different angles. And I want this one to be a bit bluer to kind of replicate like the um, like the uh, the sky, basically, like a nice blue sky. So we're going to change the color of the light to a nice little blue color. And let's see how that looks in rendered view. So it looks pretty cool. I'm actually going to drop, drop this down to 250 so it isn't too powerful. Um, but it is lighting up that um, backlight a bit more. We can probably afford to drop the color a bit whiter, maybe a bit of a darker blue as well. But you see if we go into the camera view and let it kind of load a little bit, you can see our scenes really coming together. Um, the, the candles look, the, the flame in the candles look a little odd, but we're going to add a, um, a, a compositing effect to make them stick out a bit more, make them look a little bit more realistic. Um, but in the meantime, I think we can actually make them a tiny bit brighter. So I'm going to select the camera, go to shading, and let's just bump this emission setting right here up to like, I don't know, 800. And we'll actually also make the camera or the, uh, the, the wick flame a bit lighter of an orange, maybe like right here. And that should look a lot better. So I'm gonna make sure to save. Um, if you haven't been saving, control S or file save, of course. Um, anyways, so that's about it for our scene layout. We have our light set up. We have our um, candle set up. So this video is going to be cut a little bit shorter. Um, but in the next one, we're going to be talking about making that final render for our scene and how you would go about doing that. So thanks for watching this one. If you have any comments, leave them down below or look them up on Google. Google's a great resource for this. Uh, but yeah, that's about it for this video and thanks for watching.